손님 여러분 기다려 주셔서 감사합니다. 이제 우리 비행기를 이륙하겠습니다. 여러분의 안전을 위해 좌석 벨트를 매셨는지 다시 한번 확인해 주시기 바랍니다. So a few days ago, I moved to South Korea to become a student at Korea University's Korean Language Center. I'm actually on day five of my mandatory government quarantine, and by the time you watch this, I will hopefully have completed my quarantine and be outside using my Korean. But before we jump to the present, let's go back in time to where this whole move began. As many of you know, I started learning Korean back in January of 2016 when I found out I was accepted into a study abroad program slash internship at Suncheonhyang University in Asan, South Korea. While studying at Suncheonhyang Day my first semester, I genuinely fell in love with the Korean language and life in Korea. So much so that I extended my study abroad term from one spring semester to one spring semester and one fall semester. In other words, I ended up studying in Korea for a whole year. Since my exchange year ended in December of 2016, I've returned to Korea twice to not only visit the friends I made while studying in Korea, but to also see parts of Korea that I didn't get to see while studying there. Now, time and time again, I've shared with you all how I want to get my master's in Korea, and to me, attending Korean language school in Korea will better prepare me for graduate school at a Korean university. So, step one in attending language school is to obtain all the documents required for your application and to send them off to Korea. Now, because I was applying for multiple semesters at KU's language school, I also needed to submit documentation for my student visa. In other words, I needed to submit one completed application form, one original apostled graduation certificate from my most recent academic institution, one scan of my passport, two ID pictures, which I will mention I look very, very not happy in, one original bank certificate showing that I had a deposit balance of more than 10,000 US dollars. Yeah, I know. And well, that's it. Or at least that's all I thought I needed to submit. Today is April 27th. It's finally time to send in my application to Korea, so I'm gonna make a trip to the post office and make this whole thing official. Today is May 20th, meaning it has been over three weeks since I sent my paperwork to Korea. And I wish I could tell you that it arrived safe and sound and I have my like acceptance letter, but I do not. In fact, I don't even know if it's gotten to the language school because the tracking stopped updating once it left the United States, which it wasn't supposed to do. It was supposed to be all the way through its destination. It was supposed to be like, here it is in Texas, and then here it is at the Korean language center. Blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> according to the tracking, it was last seen. Yes, this is like a missing person's case now. My mail was last seen on the 10th in LA, headed to its destination, like on a plane, right? So since we know the plane didn't go down, my paperwork either got lost or the tracking is no longer being updated. As you can tell, I'm a little stressed. I'm a little... In order to make me feel better, I'm gonna email the language school right now to ask them if they have received my paperwork. If they have not, let's write this Korean email. So as you can see here, I've already like emailed them before about other stuff. So I think I'm just gonna be annoying and respond to this and just be like, hey, it's me again. Please love me. <laughs> I finished it. It's a really simple email, so I hope they can actually like... I don't know what to give them so they can find my application. I just said like, 
I applied with this name because all my emails to them have been with my Korean name just because it feels more natural since I'm like typing the email in Korean. So I was just like, uh, on my application, I used the name Natalia Garza. <laughs> I really hope they have it because I'm gonna get really stressed if they're like, oh no, and then I'm like, Ugh. okay. One more look at my email before I send it. Don't look at the grammar, I don't know if it's right. And. Oof, okay, it's been sent. There it is. She's been sent. Also, before the next time jump, you don't have to email them in Korean. You can email them in English, Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. That night, I got a response from KU saying that my documents hadn't arrived yet. And I won't lie, that really, really stressed me out for about another week until something else became the main, um, uh, the main cause of my stress. When KU finally did receive my application and supporting documents, they emailed me saying that I was not only missing a document, but I also needed to resubmit my bank statement with a seal, a stamp, or a signature to prove its authenticity. Okie dokie guys. We have sent the documents with FedEx. FedEx had the fastest delivery day and your girl's on like a strict timeline. Like I just wanna know, are the documents good or are they not? If Korea rejects my documents again, I'm gonna cry. I mean, I kinda cried the first time, but like I'm not spent so much money on international shipping for paper. Ridiculous. Guys, guys, guys. So I'm coming to you looking like this a boogery mess at 9 11 p.m. on this lovely Thursday evening because I just got an email from KU. Do you see it? Do you see it? They put my full name in the in the subject line and I don't know why that's giving me feels but it is. Okay. It says hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for applying to the Korean Regular Language Program of Korea University. <laughs> we have examined your application materials and they were all accepted. Step two in attending language school is to pay your tuition, which surprisingly was more difficult than I was anticipating. When I got my email saying that like all my documents for my application were accepted and that they were ready to receive my tuition, they had told me that they wanted me to pay both my application fee, which is 60,000 won or about like 50 US dollars and all my tuition. I've registered for three, which means that my tuition was just under 5,000 US dollars. When I was looking into how to transfer money and stuff, I kind of started to worry because I'm a worry wart. I know, it's a fact. I started to worry like, hey, what if I send it to the wrong account number? What if they gave me the wrong account number? What if I have the wrong Swift code? I don't wanna lose $5,000. That's a lot of money to like go missing. So I ended up asking KU like very like, please, 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 can I just pay the application fee of 60,000 won first to ensure that you got it? and then I will send the remainder, meaning the $5,000 to you. And they are very reasonable people and they said that was fine. <laughs> so on Friday, I wire transferred 60,000 won, which let's get into this because it was a much more difficult situation than I anticipated, or maybe it's just me making a big deal out of nothing. I have Chase Bank, which is one of the biggest banks in the United States of A, which made me think or assume incorrectly that I could transfer money to a Korean bank in Korean won. But I found out you can only wire money in USD and Euros. Not helpful. So I started asking my friends that are expats in Korea or friends that have studied abroad in Korea for an extended amount of time, how they transferred their money when they wanted to send something from a foreign account to a Korean account. Um, and I got quite a few answers. Some of them I think I had seen before, but they didn't have really good ratings on the Better Business Bureau, which is a like credibility scale run by the US government. I decided it was just safest to go with my bank. I got an email from KU saying that they have received my application fee. Once I pay my tuition, they will send me the documents that I need to apply for my visa. <sighs> Let's do some math, guys.
So this is the total amount of Korean won that needs to be sent. Here is the most uh, current exchange number for Hana Bank for USD into Korean won, which I got from the website here. Look at that sexy table. Just kidding, it's not sexy. And this is the amount that I came to. So if I round it, it comes out to $4,736.90. I actually decided to increase the number or the amount of money I'm gonna send by $15 um, just because I am a worry wart and what if something happens or what if it doesn't like convert at the number that I did math at? There it is, there's the amount, there's the fee, there's the total that's coming out of my account. OMG! Here we go, next. Hello, Jace? We just sent KU a receipt for our wire transfer and we're done. Step number three is to apply for your student visa. Eep. So today is Sunday, June 27th and guys, oh my goodness, KU sent me like scans of my visa papers a few days ago, which means I have come to Dallas to apply for my visa. I am so <laughs> I basically put everything I need for my visa in this like black folder not that you care But I printed out so many extra copies in case I get to the consulate and they're like eh, You wrote this wrong you need to print it out and then like fill it all out all over again So I've started filling out all the forms as well as the additional like COVID related forms um, But I'm not done so we need to finish because we are going tomorrow morning probably I'm this good. Once I am able to apply for my visa and they're like, yeah, no problems with your paperwork, like we'll process or whatever. I can actually like buy my plane ticket because believe it or not, I have still not purchased the plane ticket. I don't know why I said it like that, I apologize. And it's gonna be a one-way ticket. It's gonna like finally be like, Natalia, you're moving to Korea. My heart is like this. Let's go get this visa. Visa. that it has been submitted and everything is fine I mean it has been submitted but I'm hoping that everything is fine but I did have some special I did have some s s stressful moments in that consulate uh, some of them are my fault Thank you. the first stressor was the visa fee this always messes me up because I don't carry cash if you're a US citizen you have to pay $45 for a visa and it has to be in cash like exact change or it has to be in a money order but the point is I was short $10 I originally planned on stopping at the bank before going, but I completely forgot. Completely forgot. So, I'm sitting there in the consulate, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, waiting for them to call my number. I'm like thinking it over my head. Okay, I have all my papers. I have my passport. I, 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 I got this. I'm good. I'm Gucci. I was not Gucci. I literally, I'm sitting there, I'm watching TV, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my god, my money. <laughs> I ran out of that consulate. I ran. They must. There were so many people in that room. They must have been like, "What's wrong with that girl?" I run to my car, and as I get in the car, I'm like looking up, like, "Where's the nearest ATM?" I don't even care if it's my bank anymore. Like, yeah. I drive over there. I do a horrible parking job, because now I'm stressed. Because I would like to get back to the consulate before they call my number. Because I was like seven people away, like in the queue. So I was like, "I can, I can make it back. I can do this." I couldn't do it. I run into that building and I see the security guard. I'm like, is there a bank in this building? And he's like, yeah, if you just go this way. Okay, thank you. And I'm like speed walking. I get my money and I speed walk back to my car. And then I like draw drive and, and I get lost a little bit because the roads are confusing next to highways. Anyway, I get there, I run back into the consulate building. And then I get called up immediately because everybody who saw me run out of there was gone. God bless. Um, so they call me up to the window and she takes my visa stuff she looks at it she's like okay cool okay cool then she tells me that i did not submit a flight itinerary and i was like what because nowhere on the website for e okay i checked the dallas consulate website the houston consulate website and the embassy in washington dc and no one ever said i needed to submit an itinerary because i have not booked my flight yet so i'm looking at her and i'm like uh i haven't booked my flight yet and she was like oh okay, um, when are you planning on flying out? And so I tell her, and she's like, well, there's a computer in the back. Can you just print out like an itinerary? 
even if you haven't purchased it, which means it's not an accurate thing. So, I mean, okay, yeah, I can do that. You're the immigration officer. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I will. Anyway, now they have to like further review my documentation and then issue the visa and give it to me. And they said they'd send me a text message when it's ready so I can go pick it up. Step number four was to buy a plane ticket. And honestly, this was the easiest step out of all the steps. Guys, so today is the day. Now is the moment. I am purchasing my flight to Korea. I would have done this earlier, but about a week or so ago, I applied for an entry-level travel credit card uh, with Chase. It gives me double the points on travel and double the points on dining purchases, like those together, yes. So I was waiting for it to get here before I purchased my ticket, but now that it's here, it's time. Now, I had been looking at flights for weeks, if not months, before I actually sat down to buy my plane ticket. I was looking at things like which airport would be the best one to fly out of, what cities should I do layovers in? If I have a layover, how easy is it to get from the domestic terminal to the international terminal? Little things like that. And while comparing all the flights and all the airlines, I found that the best flight was with Korean Air. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, it's done, it's done. <sighs> Guys. We have a ticket to Korea. Austin to Seattle, and then Seattle to Incheon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, I gotta go now. I have Korean class in exactly one minute. <sighs> wow, we're going to Korea. Step number five was to downsize my beloved belongings, which was both easy and hard. Guys, it's time to start figuring out what I'm gonna do with all my material possessions because I'm clearly not taking them with me to Korea. I'm thinking I should start with the closet just because I've been wearing like the same 10 items of clothing for the past year and a half. I feel like it'll be a lot easier to be like, yeah, this I don't want, this I don't need, this doesn't fit, this I'm taking. Okay, friends, so this is what I'm working with. I know it doesn't look bad, but give me a second. So there we have all of this. All of that, we have, oh my goodness, all of this stuff. I decided to start this process by going through my fall and winter clothes because as one might not expect, I owned a lot, and I mean a lot, of winter wear because even though I lived in Texas, I was always cold. While separating my clothes out into keep, donate, and sell piles, I found myself getting a little overly sentimental towards random articles of clothing that I felt each oh had gosh, their own one. story or memory attached to them. I got this one in Seoul. I think I've only worn it a handful of times. And this one, I remember I bought this my first semester in Korea, like, I remember the sales lady was like, oh, ni, kadi gonna tarul goyo, or like, oh, it'll like suit you, or whatever. And I was like, girl, I was gonna buy it anyway, but I mean, thanks. <laughs> this one, guys, I've literally only worn this ever like once because I'm too embarrassed to wear it. <laughs> I need to find someone who like wants this because it's really good and it's nice and it was expensive. <sighs> so this is the damage that I have done to my filming room. I also needed to start rehoming my language books, a task that I had been dreading for months. All right, I have my first post ready i say post my first instagram story ready let's do more japanese books i have so many why do i have so many books <laughs> i say that like i'm not a book hoarder in order to make the process feel less painful i told myself the books had to be given to someone who would truly use them in other words i sold them to you guys via instagram so if you're someone who bought one of my books, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope it or they, if you bought more than one, serve you well in your studies. 
I left my Korean books for last because they're my babies. They're the books that I used as a beginner. They're the books that I used while studying abroad in Korea in 2016. They're the books that, I don't know, I've been dedicating my life to, quote unquote, for the past uh, five years. It's hard to part with something that I feel like defines me. I don't, I don't know. So these are all the books we have sold so far. Like, look at that. Ooh, that's a lot of books. Ooh. Actually, wait, hold on. And we just sold these as well. I just didn't make a pile. Guys, if you are here, follow me on Instagram right now. In this moment that I am listing all these books, please tell me, what did you think was going on? Were you like, like something is clearly wrong she's quitting her korean studies why is she selling all these books or are you someone who saw my korean goals video for 2021 at the beginning of the year and you're like it's it it's happening she's moving i would like to know also i apologize for that not very clear transition step six was to leave the job that is was financing this whole move it was rather bittersweet Today is my last day of work or at work. I'm actually going to the office today, which I haven't been to the office in a year and a half, you know, because of COVID. And my goal for today is to not cry. <laughs> this is the only job I've ever had since I graduated university. So I've been at this company for two and a half years. And oh my God, I feel like I'm already like feeling the, like the tears, but like I had several job offers when I graduated university. And I chose this company because they seemed like they really cared about their employees, which they do. I don't know, I feel like it's weird to be like, hi, I'm not gonna see you again. I have to say bye to my work mom. I feel like I'm gonna get all sentimental. I'm really, really bad with goodbyes. Like I'm, I cry. Okay, I need to go. I got here super early. I'm like waiting at a random gas station. <laughs> Cause I'm like, who goes to work early on their last day? Okay, probably a lot of people do that. Because I'm a very sentimental person, I actually vlogged one of my last weeks in university, which happened to be the week that I not only interviewed for this position, but was offered the job. I actually just finished an interview with a company that I'd actually interviewed with over the summer for an internship. Sadly, I wasn't chosen for the internship, but um, I found out today during the interview that I had been a finalist for their um, internship, and so they wanted to call me back for a full-time position. Last night, right as I was getting out from work at like 10 p.m., I got an email from their hiring manager, and basically, Basically, what they were saying is that they like me so much that they're going to create a position for me. I'm just like, oh my, oh my, oh my god. Check the fit today. I'm officially unemployed. <laughs> Once I left my job, time moved at the speed of light. Before I knew it, it was time to set up my PCR test. Hi, I am interested in booking one of your same-day PCR tests, but I had some questions that I was hoping to get answered. And pack up my things. We were just two kids who were trying to Oh my god! Birds and see the sun. 
Side and through it. 